Hey everyone, Cody here, and today I'm going to tell you a, a way to sell more products and services. This is obviously, this is mostly geared towards art, but the first part of this is actually pretty universal for anyone that sells any type of product or service. And then the second part of this hat, like the second half of this, uh, will be for art specifically. However, this, this concept that I want to teach you, it's called... Uh, well, actually, I don't even have a name for it, but essentially it has to do with the intent. So it's called intentional marketing. Let's call it that. And intentional marketing essentially means that the intent of how you market or sell is based on the platform and the audience of who you're selling to. So let's talk about that. In the first part, we'll talk about uh, marketing or promotion and then the second part we'll talk about specifically uh, selling art okay so the first part is uh, promotion so when you think about a website you think you have to think about the intention of the website or the intention of the platform and the intention of the audience on that platform so for example if you go to Google the whole point of Google is to is to answer questions and solve problems. When you go to Google, you put in a key phrase because you're looking for an answer. You're looking for some, either a problem to be solved or you're looking for an answer to a question, right? You put in cook meatloaf and it gives you uh, answers to how to do that. So the intent of Google is to solve a problem. So when you promote content either through Google Ads or by trying to be listed on the first page of Google through SEO or search engine optimization, you are trying to, what you'll want to do is you want your, your promotional content, say it's a blog post or a video, whatever it is, to answer a question or solve a problem because that's what people are using Google for. Okay, so any type of search engine, when people are using the search engine, it's because they're trying to answer a question or solve a problem, okay? So that's Google. Now, taking into effect kind of uh, anything else with a search engine type thing that displays content, YouTube is another example of this. When you go to YouTube, you're looking for content to either solve a problem, inform you of something, or to entertain you doesn't really matter which of the three that you're looking for. Those three things are what people go to YouTube for. They, they go to either learn something, to solve a problem, or to be entertained. So that is the intent of YouTube. So what do I mean by that? That means that the content that you make to sell a product or service or to promote something, even if you're an affiliate marketer, the content that you create has to kind of cater to one of those three things. Now, of course, you can go and just make whatever you want. You can ramble for 20 minutes and vlog, and there's that, but that would essentially fall into entertainment. So my point is, is that the user intent on YouTube is to be one of those three things, informed, solve a problem, or be entertained. So let's talk about social media. Social media is a little different. Social media like Facebook and Instagram, Social media, people go to share experiences. They go to share their experiences and they go to see the experience of other people that they follow, whether it's friends, family, or, or famous people. So the intent on social media is to usually be entertained, but to share experiences. So when you sell a product, you can still sell through ads or through promotional content that you create on social media, but essentially people, the things that you share on social media are more for things for people to share. So when you create uh, an image or when you create uh, a post on, on Facebook, either it's a text post, a video post, doesn't really matter. It's something that you want to create that is share worthy. Okay. And when you create ads, you know, the environment for social media is more passive than that of YouTube or Google. Because if you go to YouTube, you're actively there. You're, you're watching a video. You're consuming content actively because you have to pay attention. But when you're on social media, a lot of times you just kind of scroll through and you get stopped when something catches your eye or when something stands out. So it, you're not actively using the site because you're not necessarily looking for something. So social media is more passive, whereas a, a site that, you know, where you put into a search, a query type thing, that is more active. Okay. So 
social media is more laid back, it's more passive, but it's also share worthy content as opposed to, you know, Google or YouTube where you would put content on there that specifically uh, solves some type of problem, whether it's to entertain or inform. Okay. The last thing I would like to talk to you about is news or informative marketing. So what do I mean by that? I mean blog posts or articles on websites like WikiHow or any type of website that you could submit an article to that, that basically instructs the user on how to do something. So instructional marketing or informational marketing is where you would submit content that teaches people specifically how to do things and then links, links back to whatever the product or service is that you're trying to, uh, to, to promote. And essentially, this has always been the same way. The websites themselves kind of come and go. I mean, you it's no different now with Facebook than it is MySpace 10 years ago. You know, they're both social media sites. One is, you know, obviously lasted longer than the other. Um, it is much more prevalent. But the idea and the concept is the same, that you go on there to share your experiences. I've been doing online marketing for 10 years now, and this I've noticed that this has always been the same. The sites change, and how people interact with those sites kind of change, but the overall idea of how they engage with those sites does not. There are active sites, and there are passive sites, okay? So how you build your, your promotional material to sell your art or any product or service it has to kind of cater to the platform that you're promoting on. Okay, so you have to, it's intentional marketing. It's the intent of the user and the platform that you are putting that content on. Okay, so for example, obviously Instagram is all about photos. So you want to create photos that people are going to stop and look at. If you're going to market on Facebook, it's going to be ads or, or content that's going to make people stop looking through this feed of just post after post and make them stop and, and think or engage. And then with you know Google and YouTube, obviously you'd create content that's not only engaging, but also you know matches the criteria that people are looking for. Okay, so that is the promotional side and that is for any type of product or service that you that you that you sell on okay so you just keep those ideas keep that idea of intentional marketing in mind so let's talk about the art side specifically and some art related platforms and again the idea or the intent of the users on those sites so first off we're going to talk about three different sites or types of sites we're going to talk about market marketplace sites then we're going to talk about print on demand sites and then we're going to talk about art specific related uh, selling platforms okay so first off let's talk about marketplace websites what is a marketplace website well this is a website that I I call them marketplaces because that's essentially where they are they're global marketplaces that sell not just art but any type of product or multiple types of products okay so the three big examples of this Etsy eBay and Amazon Amazon sells everything under the Sun uh, you know eBay sells new and used items all over the world and Etsy sells more niche items um, you know not just art but they also sell like toys and vintage items and some other things so so they're not just art but they're not quite as as wide ranging as Amazon or eBay okay so what is the intent of the user on these sites you have to think that unlike some of the sites I mentioned earlier where you're promoting content people aren't really in the mood to buy okay so on those other platforms people will buy given the right opportunity or an impulse buy but on those sites they're not looking to buy on a site like this people are looking to buy so on a marketplace website people are ready to buy most likely they have an account there and they're willing to spend money or they wouldn't be looking on that website in the first place but here's the caveat. With marketplace websites, you're selling to a vast audience that could be composed of anybody that's looking at anything um, to maybe buy that art. So what do I mean by that? I mean, you could be selling, I don't know, t-shirts or, or mugs or those, someone could be on uh, eBay and, and you're selling your art, but you're also selling your art in a marketplace where people are selling you know, vehicles, or they're selling, you know, electronics, or they're selling, uh, you know, things that they just drop ship from China. It doesn't matter, right? The point is, is that because it's not art related, 
your listing has less of a chance of, of finding a buyer because there are so many products available. And as good as these sites might be about keeping specific products in specific areas, sometimes the other products that aren't art are going to get recommended with your, your sites. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, with your pieces that you're selling. So what do I, so essentially you're selling your art to just about anybody. So you, you're selling your art on a platform where maybe people, people aren't really looking for art. They're looking for, you know, small electronics or they're looking for the next uh, deal, right? That's another thing that I want to talk about. People who shop on marketplace websites, eBay, Amazon, and Etsy are looking for deals. They're looking for good deals or, or low prices or something that they deem is, is valuable, but it, the price that you sell it at maybe probably is not the price that most people I'm not going to say that you can't sell high priced items on these platforms only saying that the majority of the buyers are people who want low prices or what they call good deals think about it for just a second people who use amazon prime i don't have it but i know a lot of people that use amazon prime because they want free shipping so they they don't want to pay more right think about that or they buy on eBay and they'll buy in bulk or they'll buy things that have free shipping on there or Etsy, you know, they'll use coupon codes. And none of that's a problem. And if you are successful on those platforms, great. Anybody can sell on them and they could be successful. Not saying you can't be. But again, intentional marketing, thinking about the platform and the types of people that shop on these websites. Most people aren't going on there to buy expensive or unique items they're going there to buy bulk either bulk items or you know price products that they can get at the lowest price okay so again you can be successful on them but just keep that in mind about those types of sites marketplace sites where you're not just selling art you're selling a product against multiple other products okay and the intent of those users so let's talk about print on demand next. So print on demand is really this web, these websites where you can upload images and then you can sell those images on pre-made goods that the companies themselves will make those goods and ship them out for you. So literally all you do is upload the photo and then when that product sells, uh, you get a small commission. The phone case that is on my phone right now, if you go back a few videos, I talk about this. My phone case actually I got from Fine Art America. I love this phone case. I really do. It because it has my art on it, but also because the phone case has served me well uh, in the time that I've had it for. I've had it for a few weeks now, and I, I love it. I have no problems with it. So my point is, is that you know we up, I uploaded that image, and then Fine Art America put that image on the phone case and shipped it out to me. And then I even bought it from my own link. Well, actually my wife bought it, but she bought it through my link and I made $5. $5 is not a lot. So print on demand can work and it does work for a lot of people, especially if they have real no, no real other avenue to kind of pursue with the type of work that they do. But photographers, this is a great avenue for photographers because they can upload you know, a lot of photographers are really good. They'll take hundreds, if not thousands of photos a year, and they can upload those to one site, and it will build their portfolio, and they have a huge chance of getting uh, sales and, and getting found. And especially because once you've uploaded that, I mean, you've done the work. You've already, if you have a great image out there, then they just print it, and you make money. So print on demand is a great solution, I think, for people who have a lot of photos to upload or don't want to sell just original pieces. For me, that's kind of the, the way that I want to go is selling original pieces. But if you want to sell prints or you want to sell uh, prints of, you know, photos that you have that you can't really do anything else with, it makes a lot of sense and it's great. The caveat here is that, again, people are not looking to buy an original or they would buy the original as opposed to a print, okay? So, you're not going to make a lot of money per product. All right, that's kind of the, the biggest caveat or downfall to print on demand is that the, the profit margins are generally really low. Now, on some of the sites like uh, Fine Art America, especially, you can set the price of how much you make per item. So you could bump it up and you could make a decent amount. But you'd have to sell a lot of those items to make a lot of money. 
some people can run ads and they can they find a you know a good niche or whatever they find a good product and they make a ton of money with it you know people use printful or or they'll use shopify or they'll use you know fine art america red bubble society six doesn't really matter but the point is is if you find a good like product that fits a fills a specific void or fits a specific niche that people like then you can do really well with it so you can make it and and depending on how much you make per item and how you market that if you find a great niche you could make a lot of money and there's people i've seen i've never met anyone but i've seen people that say that they make anywhere from 5 to 10k a month through print on demand products so it's definitely possible and it is an avenue to research if you have a lot of images that you can't really do anything else with otherwise so just again something to consider uh with you know with like images or for selling products it's another way that you can do it again just think that the uh, you'd have to sell a lot of them to make a decent amount of money so the intent of the user there is that they just want that image on something and they don't really care uh you know that they, they don't they're probably not going to look to pay a whole lot of money so the, again you'd have to sell a lot of them to to make it profitable but if you can find a way to make that work hey kudos to you so let's talk about the last type of uh, platform that I can at least think of right now that's very important. Uh, and this is art specific selling platforms. So basically art, art galleries, online art galleries. That's the best way for me to put it. Like Saatchi Art, uh, art Finder, Zatista, stuff like that. Okay, so these websites are specific to art. So they're not like marketplace websites where they're selling art and dog toys and, you know, electronics and books and all these other things. No, no, no. These sites are just for art. Okay, so these websites, that I, the three that I mentioned, and there's similar ones like that, these sites only sell art, sculptures, paintings, pictures, you know, whatever, right? But it's just art. For me, these are really the ideal types of websites for, for people who sell art and they sell originals only. Because you can sell prints on some of these websites, uh, but again, you're not gonna make a whole lot. But the caveat is that these sites for selling art, the type of buyers are higher ticket buyers. These people that are buying art on these websites generally spend more money than someone who's gonna buy that same piece on say eBay or Amazon. The people that are on these sites, they may look for a deal for like, you know, 10, 15% off, but they're still willing to pay hundreds of dollars for that same piece. And so recently I sold my most expensive painting ever for over a thousand dollars on Saatchi Art. And that is super exciting to me that someone would pay a thousand dollars for something that I did. And it's amazing because when I when I very first started painting, that was a goal of mine to sell a painting worth a thousand dollars. And now I've hit that goal. So now we're moving on to the next goal. And it's two thousand. So, you know, and it's not greed. I'm just I'm just excited. Like I I want to hit that milestone. And I've never sold that on my own site. The most I ever sold in one order was six hundred dollars, and that's still a decent amount. But it was multiple pieces. So again, you know the. The selling platforms of Saatchi Art, Zatista, Art Finder, these things, these types of websites, your the intent of the buyers is one, people are obviously they're they're to buy. There's there's nothing else you do on these sites but buy. So the intent is great because you're already targeting buyers. Two, they're higher quality buyers because the people who are going to buy the art on there are gonna spend more than someone who most likely are gonna spend more on these types of sites than they are. Amazon, eBay, whatever. Because again, these people, they may look for a deal, but, and they, and they can make offers on some of these sites. So they may not even pay full price, but again, it's probably going to be more than what you're going to make on eBay or Amazon. So I found decent success with such art. I know some people have mixed reviews or, or mixed whatever. I haven't had any problems, but again, everybody's experience is different. Now, your own website is kind of like, um, uh, a gallery I suppose but it depends on how you build it I would suggest this is kind of like a final final word so that, that's pretty much everything for the marketing aspect for both just 
products in general, but also art. So my final thing would be that if you don't have a website, please build a website. And I know some people say, oh, I don't have a website. I do just fine. That's great. You know, it, that's okay. But it still just gives you a little bit of credibility and you can control the people who come to your website. You can control the content on that website. So if you list your own products, I mean, you can list for whatever you want. Also, the obviously there's no listing fees if you list them on your own website. You can control the offers. You can control what happens to the people that come to your site. You can build your own newsletter and start sending emails to people once a week just saying, hey, these are the new pieces that I came up. So, you know, I would suggest that if you don't have a website, just, just get a cheap one somewhere, Bluehost or something. I can put a link in the description if you really want me to. Some people use Wix. I've never used Wix, so I can't I can't say if they're good or bad. Um, I can try to get it. If, if there's a link in here, it may or may not be an affiliate link. I'll put it in the notes if it is. I've never used them, so I can't, I can't say if they're good or bad. I personally have my own self-hosted WordPress site, and I use WooCommerce. Um, but there's other apps and stuff that you can do and, uh, you know, and kind of find that out as you go. But essentially my point is, is that if you have your own website, you can control how it looks, how it feels, how the content, uh, is laid out, how your products are listed, all that stuff. Um, and obviously the intent of people who come to your site are, are, they care about you. So they're, they're interested in you as a person. So that's something to think about that when someone comes to your website, They've almost made a commitment to check you out, to say, okay, look, I'm going to give you a little bit of my time and see what you're all about. And with your own website, you can kind of say, hey, this is, this is who I am, this is what I represent, and this is what my art is, or your product or service, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, so that's just for that. So essentially, I wanted to make this video on, on really how to sell more with intentional marketing. And intentional marketing means just thinking about the intent of the user, but also uh, the intent of the platform in which those users are on and catering your content and your products to those audiences and platforms. So that's pretty much it for this, for this video. I really hope that you found this video, uh, helpful. And, uh, if you did, please like rate, share, subscribe, all the cool stuff, and I'll catch you guys in another video. Take care.